Hello everyone, it's myself, Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie. As per the title, we're going to look at if you're short and how to fight taller people, or even if you're of an alright height and fighting people even taller. Now, uh, let's put a bit of a background on this just to quickly summarise. Uh, to those of you who haven't seen me before, I do what's called historical European martial arts. So I'll be looking at close combat with swords and other close combat weapons specifically. Oh, and my height, I am 5 foot 7 tall, and that in metric is about 170 centimetres, so I'm shorter than your average man, so I have this problem a lot. Hence, well, I thought it'd be worth talking from personal experience to share with you guys. But yes, uh, in terms of getting cracking now, uh, so one of the obvious disadvantages when you're quite short and are fighting a taller opponent is the problem of reach. Now, there are some pretty easy ways to help get over this and ways which help basically give you the advantage in a fight. Now let's go for some of the obvious ones. First off, pole arms. So uh, in this case, basically if you are fighting against any kind of opponent, depends on what sort of match you're in or if it was a self-defense fight, whatever context you're looking at, the longer your weapon the less it matters what reach you have. If you have something tiny, like you're doing something with dagger, then or even unarmed, you know, wrestling and that sort of thing, then it's going to exaggerate the differences in terms of arm and leg span between you and your opponent even more so. And conversely, the longer weapon you have, going up to the most extreme versions like projectile weapons, if it was real life, or you know, actual fighting to the death. Or, of course, in a close combat scenario, using something like a spear, a bill, halberd, po even things like polax, or even, of course, just a basic longsword, can help to reduce the problems caused by your lack of arm span and reach. Also including from your footwork in terms of leg span and distance you can cover per move. Uh, apart from that, hand carving. Now admittedly, some people frown on this and they think it's just kind of a cheap shot, they go, oh, you know, you're supposed to do things like stab the torso or chop them up or split the skull open and those kinds of things, but let's be honest, if we're trying to be realistic in a match or even it is some kind of self-defense scenario or battle or something like that was happening, then it's much better to be able to safely get away with hand carving, as in cutting up at the arms and hands which are very frequently forward and of course also meaning places like the legs as well especially when a person's doing a passing step forward it's much better to get a safe shot on one of those places that's not so desirable to get than to risk getting somewhere like the head or the torso and end up getting a double or after blow on yourself even if it is just on a minor part if you're trading blows, then it's almost a not, you know, battle of who will give out and die or scream in pain the soonest, as opposed to actually trying to outsmart your opponent and win properly and decisively. So again, sometimes it's you, it's perfectly fine to go for a little sneaky, cruel tactic of cutting up areas that are sticking forward, like the arms and hands. And if you weaken them and you pain them enough. You can still go for areas like the torso and the head later on when they're basically exhausted from you. So that's one of my key tricks. Apart from that, closing distance. One of the key things that can help is rather than having your opponent use their reach to their advantage, you take that advantage away. Just as anyone would know, fighting if you have something like an arming sword and you're against something like a spear, you don't want to be out at a distance where they can hit you and you can't hit them. So much in the same way, even if you've got equal weapons, then one of the things that can help is to try and practice to build up your confidence and learn to close in into doing things like grappling, uh, doing disarms and takedowns, or even just being able to cover yourself at a closer distance and do things like draw cuts and, you know, things like, um, hooking motions, I've seen pommel strikes to the face, other things like that which are options that you and your opponent can do at a close distance, and again a 
sometimes risky and require quite a bit of bravery and determination, but when you've got it practiced and rehearsed so you can pull it off much better, it gives you that advantage again, especially considering, of course, being shorter and having smaller stature, smaller limbs and smaller everything, you're always going to have a bit of an advantage manoeuvring about in a really tight space than your opponent will. So if you can use that to your advantage, rather than cry and complain about their advantage, which is their reach, then you can win much better and much more often. Don't forget also, practice your high guards. So you've got these type of stances which are fairly low, stances like this, which are higher, but I specifically mean defences. So for example, a sloping guard like this, or like this, and other defences like that, to parry weapons coming from high, because I need hardly mention that due to stature differences between you and your opponent, more frequently you're going to get struck around the head, the shoulders, maybe the arms. So hence, if you tailor your practice and your training, especially in things like free play or sparring in your downtime, to specifically cover your upper body, rather than just all the general defences covering sort of the mid and the lower areas as well, and give a bit of extra practice specifically towards high protection. And also actually on a similar note, lower strikes so you can get underneath your opponent's guard, it's quite helpful. Because as I say, since your opponent's going to be striking a lot more on your head, you should capitalise on that and practice more techniques that help against high strikes, that parry high strikes, and help you to repost and give nasty little counters against high strikes that'll happen to you. Because the chances are, it's probably going to happen to you. Next point is a deterrent as opposed to something you should do, which is don't duck. Now, this is actually something I had when I was just beginning and practicing and basically didn't know what to do properly. I used to have a very bad habit of ducking because it's that idea, you know, I'm short, so I think someone tall is going, whoop, trying to lock my head off, and I can go, huh, ha ha! Except the problem is, unlike in things like movies where people really telegraph and flail around like that, or in video games where you could just go, oh, yeah! and get them, in real life, people tend to either, the best way to describe it is sort of adapt mid-swing, so they might be going for a, you know, something like this, which is called a fendente in Italian, the uh, a basic sort of cut around that way, and then they see you ducking in that motion as you're swinging, and then at that point they basically sort of adapt down, it becomes more vertical, so I've found in so many cases, although it's it is a bit surprising still when I think back on it, they still very frequently would hit me, and actually with the particular types of equipment it was pretty bad, because the way that things like real life helmets and things like uh, fencing masks work, of course, because of the, you're usually facing your opponent, they've got thicker protection on the front than on the back, and it means that actually, rather than just standing there, not defending myself, getting struck on the face, it would be even worse whether I'm unarmoured or armoured by ducking like that because I'm going to get struck on the back of the head, which is weaker in the skull, weaker in a helmet, and weaker in a fencing mask, so it's a lose-lose situation. So one thing I'd recommend is, although maybe I see in things like boxing people sort of duck and dive a bit, I'm not Obviously, I'm not an expert in that area, I don't know, but when it comes to weapon fighting, again, perhaps it's even more exaggerated of longer and weapons with better reach, such as spears or two-handed swords, which might be why I experience the problem so much, but I find that when you duck, people usually either change their hit and still get you, or they'll just simply do a follow-up, because if you do something like a parry, then you stop their weapon. There it is, it's caught, they've got to go and adapt, do a new motion from the beginning. Whereas if you just duck, then they've got that inertia still, so they can pretty much just go swing, swing. Oh, your head's caught, done. So just an extra bit of advice. I know it's a bit pessimistic, but please, if you are fighting against someone who's taller, try to refrain from ducking. And what I'd recommend instead 
which again might help if you're following my earlier advice to close distance and get into perhaps grappling range or just generally take their reach advantage away, is do what I've heard my club call a, a Fiore step after Fiore de la Berry. The idea is, rather than doing something like going back to dodge a weapon, which means of course you're too far away to hit them, especially if they've got better reach than you in the first place, or just ducking, which has the problems I mentioned earlier, you can instead step to the side. Now of course that helps, but if you do it in a diagonal motion, you can also close the distance. So you're sideways getting out of the way, and you're forward closing the distance. Combine this into one, and you know, in the type of time you have in a fight, which is not much at all, in one step, you've got the distance closed, and you've gotten out of the way of where they're trying to, you know, sort of gear the swing towards, you know, something like going down on the head. They've got gravity on their side, but normally they're aiming to around a certain area where they see you were, that's where they focus the most of their force. And then when you're not there anymore, it's kind of, it's either a trailing hit that's not hitting as hard, or they might have even done a stop cut like this, rather than a, a sort of cut all the way through, and they'll either miss you, or they'll hit you weaker, which again, you can parry and whatnot as well. So that's something that's very useful. And again, you don't even need something like a shield to do that. It's perfectly suitable for swords, so if my opponent did standard Fendente from here, which is um, Guard Lady, so just doing that motion, trying to cut through me wherever, then I can just, perhaps from here, which is long tail. again, this, these are just specific examples, but can be done in various ways. They could be there, and then I go, nope cut around. So there, I use that Fiore step, a diagonal step, to get in the, <coughs> excuse me, to get into the range closer. And it's something that works better, I find, if you're using medieval style weapons. With something like saber, or other basket hilt weapons, or rapier, or pretty much the kind of things like you'd imagine sport fencers doing, where you're doing shuffle steps, it can still be done but to a lesser extent. If you're doing a passing step, which is swapping feet, so left foot, right foot, you cover a lot more ground, and of course diagonally, you're able to go off to the side more, and forwards more. So then I'm going, closing distance, getting an advantage. So yes, that's the sort of stuff that you should do when you're short on your opponent. And, uh, Anyone else has got any further tips, feel free to put them below, and uh, thanks for watching. I hope it helped you guys. See you later.